seat of a car is a place you'll very rarely find me at. There are two reasons for that. One, I do not trust anybody else driving. I mean, you know, with our driving standards and our roads, that's a given. And two, I love driving, so it's much more fun to be in the driver's seat. But there are exceptions to the rule. And this car, the Range Rover Vogue SE long wheelbase, is a car that I'm willing to make that exception for. You can see the amount of room I have. So while I have this car to test for a couple of days, what I'm doing today is sitting in the back seat and getting a feel of what a typical Range Rover customer who buys a long wheelbase feels like and what the experience is like. If you look at the almost 50 year old history of the Range Rover, it makes for some very interesting reading. SUVs are commonplace today. They're in every segment. They're the hot sellers. Everybody wants one. But in 1970, the Range Rover was the first proper sports utility vehicle in the world. It was the first luxury car you could actually take off-road, so you could go to your farm in it, put on your Wellington boots, get down and dirty, look at whatever was supposed to be done, get off, change shoes, take it to the high street. It was the car for all purposes. And that ethos has been maintained over the years. And today we have so many variations of the Range Rover, it's hard to keep up. But this, I suppose, for somebody who's chauffeured, is the top dog of the Range Rover range. It's a long wheelbase car, 5.2 meters, and you can see the amount of space I have. Just to give you an idea, on planes today, in economy class at least, it's very difficult to open your laptop and do some work. In the Range Rover, look at the amount of room I have remaining after I open it. Comfort is also very important. It's got double glazed gas, so uh, the noise isolation from the outside world, as you can hear yourself, is very, very good. And the air suspension is actually quite good. So despite the big 21 inch wheels, the car rides quite well. Refinement, again a given. Audio is very good. And sitting in the back of a Range Rover, while I would rather be driving, I can understand why people spend so much money to be back here. There's lots of space. It's very comfortable. You're isolated from the outside world. And it makes a lot of sense if you're chauffeured around. But that's for today. For tomorrow, I think I'm gonna get in the driver's seat and remember, like I said, it's a 5.2 meter long car. I have to understand whether this is workable in Indian conditions. Can you drive this yourself every day? That's going to be interesting to figure out. spent some time in the back seat of the Range Rover and rather enjoying it too, I'm back to where I belong, the driving seat. Now this fourth generation Range Rover has almost 50 years of history behind it. Uh, and what Range Rover has done effectively well is that it's retained the main DNA of the car. Factor one is the styling. It's a very large, a very imposing, and a very impressively styled car. But it's not in your face, it's not overtly aggressive, it's not trying to do a look at me look. It's a very classily designed product that stands out but for all the right reasons. You know, people look at it with respect, which is rare. Uh, the other thing that Range Rovers maintain is the off-road ability that the cars are famous for. So, like the original Range Rover, you can take this virtually anywhere. It's got a two-speed low, low transfer case. Uh, you can take it off-road, it might have big wheels, but the four-wheel drive with the different modes, with the snow mode, with the mud mode, this is a car that can take you anywhere and it'll do that in full luxury. Of course, that off-road ability is backed by a three-liter diesel engine. Uh, now again, like I said, this is an entry-level Range Rover, so this is the smallest engine type that you can buy for this car. Three-liter diesel, about 255 horsepower, 600 and above torque, it's paired to an eight-speed automatic gearbox, and even though it's a big car, it's a pretty heavy car, it actually works quite well. You can reach three digit speeds pretty quickly. Uh, for daily driving, actually, this is more than adequate, uh, especially for our conditions. But can it go faster? Of course. But I don't think that's really the point of a long wheelbase Range Rover. It's going to be chauffeured around mostly. And the performance that's offered by this engine is quite good and it's fairly fuel efficient for a car of its size. Uh, it's got an effective range of over 600 kilometers on a single tank. And I think that's pretty good. Again, you know, it, this is a pure luxury product and that shows in the way the seats are made. They're superbly comfortable. They hold you in all the right places. 
the suspension is very well tuned. It's quite comfortable. It might be a bit, a bit wafty, but for a car of this size and weight, that's probably ideal. The fit and finish, the isolation, like I said before, the whole, I mean, the whole product is just, it's a cut above anything else that you can buy mostly. Of course, Range Rover has also kept up with modern times with the multimedia system. Some of their older multimedia systems weren't that impressive. But these combination of two touch screens with a liquid display for your dials works quite well, actually. This is, as their multimedia systems are evolving, it's becoming easier to use. The Meridian sound system sounds quite good. And even though we are in an entry level long wheel base, I mean, I don't know, I think that's an oxymoron, an entry level Range Rover, it doesn't really fit together. But you still get quite a bit of equipment. You've got the panoramic sunroof, LED lighting, the Meridian sound system, big 21 inch wheels, the touch screens. Uh, you don't get the executive seat package, you have to pay extra for that. There are more toys that you can buy, of course, that depends on your budget. But even then, this is a car that's worth 2.5 crores plus on road, which is quite a lot of money. So you have to be really rich to buy it. But it's got the luxury, it's got the design, it's, it, it commands respect on the road and it's got the off-road ability. What it lacks, or rather where it falls short, is that at 5.2 meters, like I said earlier, it's a big car, so finding parking is a problem. Plus, I think this is a bit of a, uh, too much of a luxury to be driving yourself. This is a car in which you're chauffeured. The primary point of this car is to be in the back seat while your chauffeur takes you anywhere you need to go. And because it's a Range Rover, it can tackle any terrain. The fundamental problem, I think, with the Range Rover long wheelbase is that it's aimed at a very small niche customer. It's very attractive, it's, it, it serves its purpose very well, you can take it anywhere. Huge amount of space, refinement, comfort. But for 2.5, you can actually buy two very, very good cars. And that's where the conundrum behind the Range Rover lies. Do you buy one car that does everything, but is a bit large for Indian conditions? Or do you split up that money to buy two very nice cars that you can use for two different uses? You know, maybe a daily car and a weekend car. That's the fundamental question that is going to be posed to Range Rover customers. And I think that's where the choice lies.